with this and basically with the inner circle we have a radius of one so we made 30 degrees up 30 degrees down from this axis x and y it has a radius of one and that would make 60 degrees if that's one that's one you'll find that the actual distance of this is one and it's split 60 60 so we've made an equilateral triangle 60 60 60 if it's all 60 degrees in each of them it would be equal sides as well so an equilateral triangle, one, 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 it's 60, 60, 60 degrees. We split that in half down the middle. Then we can use a bit of Pythag. Well, we know that if that length was one, we split in half, it's now going to be a half. We know this is one. Pythag to figure out this, one minus a quarter would give you three quarters. So the area of that would be three quarters. That's going to be root three on two. We then have one of our exact triangles. Why we like to use this with a hypotenuse of one is because if you use sine, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, sine just becomes this length here. This length here is actually a measurement of the y coordinate. So we can say that the y coordinate is actually sine. So sine 30 is a half. Sine 60 is root three on two. We use the same triangle. Cos is a measurement of the x because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So we actually can call that cos 30 is root 3 on 2. We can use the same triangle, cos 60, we can see that that is 1 on 2, um, or you can call it cos pi on 3, radians as well. The other triangle that gives us exact values, there's only two of them, is this um, right angle triangle. So we go 1 on 1, make that 45 degrees. Using Pythag, it's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is going to be the square root of 2. That's the total length. Halve that. That's going to be root 2 on 2. It actually makes an isosceles triangle where 45, 45, 90, that's root 2 on 2. That has to be root 2 on 2. Again, we can see that sine 45 is root 2 on 2 or cos 45 is root 2 on 2 as well. <coughs> tan is opposite over adjacent. So tan is obviously going to be for 45, 1 because it's the same thing divided by the same thing. And that's how we get all our values down here, all our exact values, if you recall how we got those. Then we talked about symmetry. Um, don't forget. So with symmetry, um, we're talking about you know points on there. So if I've got sine 30, that would be the same value as what? Well, it's this position there. It also occurs over here, which is going to be 30 degrees off the 90 degree triangle. So we can call this pi on six because it's pi on six. Better be the same thing as pi on six, two pi on six, three pi on six. Sorry, pi on six. 2 pi on 6, 3 pi on 6, 4 pi on 6, 5 pi on 6. It'd be the same thing as 5 pi on 6. Or you could call it 6 pi on 6, minus pi on 6 is 5 pi on 6. That's going to have the same angle. So it has the same symmetry. So really, I could say that I could come up with a few rules here um, to call what these are. Oh, where did that go? There we go. So when we're looking at um, symmetry, we can actually call a few things. So if I have an angle in here, and let's call this angle, doesn't matter what it is, let's not make it an angle we know about. Let's just call it here. Let's call this angle theta. If this is angle theta, if I call sine theta, what is that equal to in this quadrant? Okay, so we call this quadrant one, call this quadrant two, three, and quadrant four. This quadrant one is from zero to 90 degrees. Or I can call it from 0, pi on 2. Quadrant 2 is from 90 degrees to 180 degrees. Or pi on 2 to pi. Because don't forget, this is pi on 2. This is pi over here. Quadrant 3 is from pi to 3 pi on 2. Or I could call, say it from um, 180 to 270. Oops, that should be a comma. Sorry. This last quadrant, quadrant four, 
would be from 270 degrees to 360 or from um, 3 pi and 2 to pi, 2 pi. Alternatively, this quadrant could be 0 to negative 90 because you could go that way or it could be, you know, two revolutions around and so on. When we try and find symmetry, if this is sine zero, what would it equal to in this quadrant? Well, we want to get the same value, right? We want to get this value here. If you think about it, that's going to give me the same value. So this would be equal to sine pi minus theta or 180 minus theta. That would give me the same value as that. They would be equal because it gives you the same location. If we talked about cos theta, cos theta, don't forget this length here, this is sine theta. If I go start a pi and take away that angle, that's going to give me this angle here. That's the same length, right? So that is sine pi minus theta, which is the same length as that. Now, if I've got cos theta, we're talking about this length here. What would it be equal to over here? Well, it would be the same distance out. But that would give me a positive answer if I just did cos theta that one. We want it to be negative, so we're going to times it by a negative number. So that's going to equal to that. So that would be equal to minus. Uh, it's going to be cos. Um, I'm doing that. Yeah, it would be the same one, the same value for that one there. Um, so when we're trying to find these symmetries around here, we're trying to think, okay, what is its um, angle, right? So that would equal cos, and that would be obviously pi. Could do that wrong way, or 180 minus theta. So whatever that angle is, that would be the same value. So it would be the um, <clears throat> Basically, if you looked up this angle, if you said 150, this is 150 degrees, to get the same value here, it'd have to be negative of that because it would be a negative, and that's where um, we know it is. Down in this quadrant, what would it be the same? Well, if we've got theta here, this would be, if you did sine, pi plus the angle that would take us to this angle right so if you've got sine theta that's this angle but if we went pi plus that what would be equivalent to the getting the same value as that would have to make that negative they would be equal so what i can say is that they're equal to each other now okay so i'm trying to make these equal to sine theta so what i'm really saying is sine theta is equal to sine pi minus theta because you're going to get the same value because if I start it here and I take away the same value I'm going to still get a positive one right they're going to be the same values it's also going to be equal to it's also going to be equal to negative sine pi plus theta because if you go start here and you add the angle on that's going to give you a negative answer of this one so we've got to put the negative in front to get it back to the same value and also that is going to be equal to sine 2 pi minus the angle but it would have to be negative at the front as well because if you're down here and you have the same angle in there so if you start to find take that away to get it to be the same value of that 
Well, that's going to give you the negative value of that. So therefore, that would be the negative, but the negative would then make it positive, which is the same reference angle. So let's have a look at this. So if we think of a half, we know sine 30 degrees is a half. That's a half. If you did sine 150, that would be over here. That would be a half. If you think about it, it's 180 minus 30 degrees would be 50. Here, though, if you did pi plus or 180 plus 30 degrees, it would be 210. Now, we know it's going to be the 30 degree angle, but it's going to be negative a half. So this thing would equal negative half, but then if you times it by negative, it actually becomes positive a half. So it's the same thing. So we're just trying to find these reference angles around there. Over here, if we did um, 2 pi minus 30, you'd know that would give you negative a half. So if we put the negative sign on the front of it, which is what we did, um, that would be the same thing. Or I could call it pi on 6, which is 30 degrees. Now for cos over here, again, it's going to be, because you're going to get a negative cos if you have, that would give me the same value as this. Over here, though, it's going to be positive. Because if I even if I take that angle, go back this way, I'm still going to get a positive answer. So we're just trying to find symmetry around there and understand why that works. So how does this work? Let me just quickly whiz through a few of these questions for you. Oh, I should have recorded this. Completely forgot. All right. Am I recording? I am. That's all right. Look at that. I'm really tired. I am recording. So that's sort of how we get there. Um, let's have a look at these questions of symmetry angles. So hopefully you get pretty quick at these uh, and you'll start smashing out them. And I'm just going to kind of show you where I'd like you to eventually be. This is all the theory we just explained. And you can make up infinite amount of these, which is absolutely fine. So when I look at something like this, and I see that we've got sine theta equals 0.42, cos x equals 0.7, tan theta equals that. Write down the values of these. But I'm just going to look at sine. I'm going to get tan later on. If I do pi plus theta, I know that's going to be negative 0.42 because I've moved into the third quadrant and sine would then be negative. So what I'm trying to picture there is that I've got a value. It's told me that sine theta equals 0.42. So what I'm picturing is, oh, it's like this length is 0.42. So then the reference angle, well, let's say it was at pi and it's added the angle on. So that's going to come down to negative 0.42. So I know that my answer there is going to be negative 0.42. Cos pi minus x, if I start a pi and I go back on x, I know it's going to be negative 0.7. Because with cos, we're saying, hey, that's 0.7, this length here. If you start a pi and you minus that same angle away, well, that's going to be the same length, but it's going to be minus 0.7 over here. So I know where that is because I've gone there and we're taking that angle. So I can see that that one is um, minus 0.7 here, sine um, 2 pi minus theta, that's going to be negative 0.42. Sine pi minus theta, that's going to be uh, 0.42 because it's going to be positive because we've started a pi and we've came back. The other one was 2 pi over here. If we take away that angle, well, it's going to be negative 4.2, which is here. Here, we're there, so I know it's going to be positive. Um, also, I know what sine. It's, it, this is going to go into the third quadrant. Sine would be negative. This is going to go into the fourth quadrant. Sine would be negative. This is going to go into the second quadrant. Sine will be positive. This is going into the third quadrant. Cos would be negative, so it would be negative 0.7. This would go into my fourth quadrant. Therefore, cos will be positive. It's 0.7. I know that that's going to be over here. Tan, we can think about where tan is positive and negative. Tan is positive. All of them are positive here. Sine is only positive there. Tan is positive here because sine and cos are both negative, and cos is the only one positive here. So with tan, that's positive in these two. So we know tan 0.38. So if I look at pi minus that, I'm going to the second quadrant. So it's going to be negative. Okay, so that's going to be negative 0.38. 2 pi minus alpha, that's going to be negative as well. So that's going to be negative 0.38 over, and that's it. So when we go through here, 
These questions is where it gets a little bit tricky. We want to find the value of x. This is equal to that. And we know that x is between pi on 2 to pi. So what do we know with that? If we know that cos is on those values, okay, and that's where we're at, So if cos equals, uh, let me put this. So we know that this is equal to cos, and we know that the value of x falls in here, and this is where x is, okay? So if you think about it in the unit circle, we know that x is somewhere in here, right? And we know that the value of this is going to have to be negative, okay? And that's equal to negative cos pi on 6. Well, cos pi on 6 is equal to what? Pi on 6 is equivalent to 30 degrees. I know that is equal to root 3 on 2. However, this is negative cos, so that's equal to negative root 3 on 2. Therefore, the value of x is actually the degree. So that actually needs to be what? Find the value of x. I know that that needs to be 5 pi on 6. So it would be cos 5 pi on 6 would be equal to negative cos pi on 6 because it's actually referring to the angle. If you think about it, negative 5 pi on 6 is going to give me the same angles in here. Okay, so it's actually an angle that we're trying to find there because that's going to give you the same length here and here, except that's going to give you a positive one, but it's got the negative on the outside, giving you a negative answer, where that is still going to give you negative root 3 on 2. So when you're looking at this, you're actually trying to find an angle in there. You've got to use this as a reference. Think about where that's going to be. Okay, I know x is in here. It's in the third quadrant. If we've got negative pi on 6, I know that's negative root 3 on 2. So what's the value of that going to be? I'm going to let you guys try and figure those ones out. Any questions, please yell out if you do. So when we're doing symmetry, um, please just try and you know, have, a, have a go through some of these. Um, really, th this is probably a bit easier. When you step it up into examples um, of that other one, it does get a bit trickier. I find these are, these are nice and easy. This question that I don't want to go through, question two, is a little bit different, so hopefully that helps. Um, that one's a bit different because you're finding the angle. <clears throat> For the diagram below, write down the values of A equals cos pi minus theta. Well, if that's A, and we know that's cos minus theta, right? What's A equals cos minus theta? So if you're at cos pi minus theta, okay, we've came all the way around. You can see that's pi minus theta. Cos is what? Cos is a measurement of the x, okay? If we know that that's a measurement of the x, we know that this is a half here because it's the x-coordinate. Therefore, that needs to be negative a half. So have a look at those ones. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think you guys will be okay. The rest of it's on your calculator. Um, thinking about where you are, it should be okay. These ones, have a think about where you can find the same value of x, you're just trying to make it um, symmetrical. Exact values of circular functions, we've pretty much already gone through that. We've done the proofs. Don't worry about these proofs. You can have a look at them if you like. It's just a different way to prove it. I do prefer ours. The main thing here is that they really, it's good to know these values. If you know these values off by heart, it's pretty good. You can remember them. You can derive them from how I've showed you, if you do forget, really you want to make sure you're, you're pretty aware with pretty aware of these these values though. Root two and two is the same thing as one and root two, by the way, as well. It, we just rationalize the denominator. So this should really be root three and three as well. So exact values, I'm pretty comfortable that we've already gone through. Um, you guys should be able to know what they are, finding out what the exact values are. So if I've got sine 2 pi on 3, I know that was referenced to pi on 3. Pi on 3 is sine root pi on 3 is root sine. Pi on 3 is root 3 on 2. Therefore, I know that's going to be positive because it's in the second quadrant. That's also root, two, two, root 3 on 2. I know that this is going to be 
reference angle is cos pi on 4, that's root 2 and 2, that's going to be negative root 2 and 2 because that is in the other quadrant. So they kind of go hand in hand, these two symmetry ones. So if you've got cos 3 pi on 4, well, I'm picturing, okay, I came off pi on 4 here because that would get me to 3 pi on 4, the angle from here to here. So I know that I'm referencing it to this angle. And when I'm thinking of cos, I'm thinking, okay, here I know that this is root 2 on 2. So because I'm over there, that needs to be negative root 2 on 2. And that's sort of what I'm picturing in my brain. When I see um, tan equals pi on 6, that's why it helps to remember what tan pi on 6 is. So what is tan pi on 6? Whoops, let's go down. So what we're trying to do there is if I know what tan pi on 6 is, I know what 5 pi on 6 is. I know it's going to be negative here, though, for tan, and it's going to be positive there. So tan pi on 6 is opposite over adjacent. So I know that's going to be um, root 3 on 2 divided by um, a half. So that's just going to equal root 3. Um, I believe, let me just double check that. I always forget these two. It's been a while. Root 3. Oh, did I do pi on 6? What am I doing? I'm doing pi on 3. Yes. Pi on 3. Root 3. Yep. So root 3 it is. Um, I know that it's going to be root 3 when it's pi and 3 over here. That's probably more like pi and 3 because it's actually 60 degrees. So over there it's going to be negative. So I know that tan, uh, was it pi? Was it 2 pi and 3? I can't remember the question there. Sorry. It was 2 pi and 3, I think it was. Okay, I don't even see it there. No, it was 5 pi and 6. Tan pi and 3, let's just call it tan 2 pi and 3. I'm going to call it anyway. If it's tan 2 pi and 3, I know that's going to be negative root 3. Similarly, if I also have here, that's going to be um, tan 4 pi and 3. I know that's going to be positive because tan is positive in this quadrant. So that would equal root 3. 4 pi and 3, 5 pi and 3 would be here, 6 pi and 3 would be there. So tan, uh, that would be 5 pi on 3. I know that that would be negative root 3. So that's how you can kind of use symmetry um, and together. One uh, last thing I'm going to show you guys is how do I count around the unit circle, which I haven't really gone into. But when I'm thinking of pi on 6, okay, if I've got a pi on 6, I'm trying to make my way out around the circle, I know that every hole will get to here. So I've got 1 pi on 6. 2 pi on 6, 3 pi on 6, 4 pi on 6, 5 pi on 6, 6 pi on 6, should be going along there, 7 pi on 6, 8 pi on 6, 9 pi on 6, 10 pi on 6, 11 pi on 6, 12 pi on 6, back to the start. So when I'm counting with pi on 6s, that's kind of what I do. I just sort of go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've made my hole 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You'll notice that this simplifies down to actually pi on 3 because it will cancel out with the denominator. That will be, uh, this will be 2 pi on 3, and this would be, or you could call it 3 pi on 3, which is also the same thing as pi. Um, that would be 4 pi on 3, and this would be the same thing as 5 pi on 3. So when I look at my pi's on threes, um, just just note to where you land, where you can land on, because sometimes if you've got a pi on six, it can change to a pi on three. If I'm looking at pi on three, I just sort of go one pi on three, two pi on three, three pi on three, um, and that's sort of how I kind of do it. So one, two, three pi on three, four pi on three. It's a really bad line. Like 60 degrees. Let me try that again. So, yeah, just as a quick one. Actually, I should just circle as well. So, if I've got that, I sort of see it as, yep, there we go, it's better. So, I kind of, when I'm doing pi on three, I kind of picture like one, two, three, four pi on three, 
five, 6.3. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, one, two, one. That's not two there, I stuffed it up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because six pi three should get you back to two pi. So one pi three, two pi three, 3.3 would always get you the whole. 4.3, 5.3, and so on. When I'm doing a 45 um, degree triangle, um, I just picture it again. Um, obviously, 45 is a bit less than 6. So when I look at this one here, um, I sort of picture then, I'm just going to go take this back. If I'm doing 45s, then what I will picture is sort of pi on 4. 2 pi on 4, which is a half, 3 pi on 4, 4 pi on 4, 5 pi on 4, 6 pi on 4, 7 pi on 4, 8 pi on 4. So that really helps just that counting of getting around. Um, it also helps with negatives. So if I go like negative 3 pi on 4, I kind of go, okay, negative 1 pi on 4, negative 2 pi on 4, negative 3 pi on 4, which is what I'm here there. If I've got like, let's just say negative 11 pi on four, I know that one full revolution is gonna be negative eight pi on four. That leaves me with three, because I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is two pi. I know double the denominator will do a full revolution because it's two pi. That leaves me with three pi on four, negative one, two, three. So that's actually also negative 11 pi on four. So you can use these all um, in your mind, hopefully, and help you. So if I have like 21 pi on 4, I just go 8, 16. So I know I've got 16 pi on 4, gives me a full revolution. Difference between those is it's really 5 pi on 4 is where I'm trying to get to. Okay, I know pi on 4, 4 pi on 4 will take me here. So that would be 5 pi on 4 over there, which is the same thing as 21 pi on 4. Because this would do two full revolutions, so it's gone. 8, 16 pi on 4. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. But what I can actually do is see that I know it's 5 pi on 4, which I can look at as splitting up as 4 pi plus pi on 4, because I know that's going to take me halfway around. And then there. If this was negative, obviously, the same thing. I know that I've done two negative full revolutions. And I've got negative 5 pi on 4, which is the same thing as negative pi on 4 minus pi on 4. So I start here and I go that way there. So you'll notice that if I was going negative, I'd land there. If I was going positive, I would land to there. Um, and that's it uh, from me, guys. If you have questions, I'd love to hear them. I'm going to stop the recording.